Hi, this is Yorgos, and uh, it's my first video covering various aspects of music production and technology in general. In this video, we'll take a closer look on how we can uh, sync external hardware synths or drum machines with a DAW, and in our uh, scenario, we're using Ableton Live. As a drum machine, we use a uh, DSI Tempest and as our synth, uh, the Axis Virus Ti. First of all, we have to create uh, external instrument tracks for our hardware devices. So here I created uh, an external track for the Axis Virus and uh, three tracks uh, for the Tempest. First thing uh, we should do is go to Options, Preferences, and there in the Audio menu where we set our buffer size level. I think uh, 256 samples and down is a reasonable amount. Then we go to MIDI Sync and uh, in our chain, we want uh, Ableton Live to be the master, so we go to Output MIDI Ports and enable Track Sync for our audio interface and for the Tempest. Here, our audio interface sends MIDI clock to the Axis Virus and here it sends MIDI clock sync to Tempest because uh, there are a lot of different hardware devices out there uh, you have to find some kind of system menu for your hardware device and uh, set it to become the MIDI slave in the chain so uh, Ableton Live can uh, send uh, its clock, uh, MIDI clock sync. In our case, uh, for the Tempest, we have to uh, hit the system button, uh, scroll with the soft knobs to uh, MIDI clock menu, and from there we set our MIDI clock mode to slave and uh, the MIDI clock in cable to USB. For the access virus, we have to hit uh, the configure button. Uh, we go to the second MIDI page, and uh, from there, we make sure that uh, our MIDI clock mode is uh, synced to external. Uh, of course, there's another scenario where you can uh, set your hardware device to be the master. In that case, um, you have to disable, of course, the track sync here on the MIDI output ports, and you have to enable the uh, track sync on the input MIDI ports. Uh, in our case, uh, we use uh, the Tempest as a master, uh, but uh, here also we have to configure our hardware device uh, to be this, the master. So, on the Tempest again, we hit the system button, we scroll through the MIDI clock uh, menu, where we set the MIDI clock mode, this time to master, and our MIDI clock out cable to USB. And as you can see here, Ableton Live receives uh, the MIDI clock uh, messages from the Tempest and uh, we have to hit the external button in order to um, uh, uh, Ableton to become uh, the slave in the chain so every time I hit uh, the play button on the Tempest Ableton Live follows 
Let's return back to our initial setup. Here we can find the sweet spot between uh, our external hardware and uh, our DAW. I'm gonna set this to uh, the default value. Well, where is zero millisecond? And uh, I will play a click track first on the Tempest so we can find the sweet spot by enabling uh, Ableton Labs metronome. So we hit play. As you can hear, there's a slight shift between the two. Let's move this so we can find the sweet spot. Minus 30 millisecond is this one. Okay. Then we want the access virus. So let's play an ARP. I'm enabling the arpeggiator in the access. Okay, I think we find the sweet spot for those two. I think we're ready to go. Um, let me analyze right now uh, some of the lat latency factors that I have discovered and uh, were bugging me for a long time. I found out that uh, some native plugins of Ableton Live, like uh, the compressor or the limiter or the multiband compressor, these are all devices that uh, introduce latency into the signal to our chain. Uh, let me demonstrate it. If you listen closely, uh, as I duplicate the compressor with look ahead mode of one millisecond, you will hear you will hear uh, our sync slightly drifting. Let's hit play. Everything now looks normal. All right. As as you've noticed, uh, 
when I duplicated many times the compressor with a look ahead mode above zero, there was a slight, a slight drift after I duplicated many times, uh, and that indicates that uh, every plugin, native plugin in Ableton Live with a uh, look ahead mode be above zero introduces latency to the signal to our chain. You can try this for yourself also if you want to find out if a plugin introduces latency. This is a good way to find out. Another latency factor I found is uh, on the insert return tracks of Ableton Live. Uh, when I insert, let's say, an EQ which has the quali high quality mode, if you place a plugin that has high quality mode on your returns, this introduces latency to the chain also. Another latency factor is if you group uh, some plugins and add another chain and uh, load a high quality plugin inside that chain. And uh, one last latency factor are all external VST plugins when uh, inserted into an Ableton track, this also introduces latency to our chain. If you uh, need to use some of the external plugins or plugins with uh, look ahead mode, you have to go to options, preferences, and on the output MIDI ports, you have to readjust the MIDI clock sync delay. And every time you insert a plugin that introduces latency, you have to readjust this Okay, let's listen to uh, our sync in a more musical content. I think it's pretty tight. Uh, that was about it. A quick and easy way so you can uh, configure your external hardware, synth or drum machine to play along with your uh, DAW. If you need some advanced clock management, you could try Inner Clock Systems Precision Tempo Sync Solutions with various products like um, the Sync Gen 2 Pro or the Sync Shift, etc. 
and another one uh, by S and D, the Acme Four. These two are solid clock management systems that can that can help you uh, find a good way to sync your DAW and your external hardware. Hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for more music production and technology videos coming up. Thanks for watching.